Well, it's no secret that the past two years have been challenging. And I wanted to speak to a couple who have been thriving during this crazy time of stress, crisis, and pandemic. I want to know, how are they keeping their marriage healthy? How are they keeping their family healthy? And you're going to love this next guest. Coming up next, we have Canadian faith leaders, co-pastors, and a powerhouse husband and wife team, Andrew and Chantel Beresford. And they're coming to speak about how they have been making Making it work from early ages of 20 in this relationship, launching a brand new ministry, raising three kids, going through crisis after crisis, what they have learned from their mistakes, their rock bottom moments, the word they have for those that are struggling in marriage right now. And they're going to talk about also the crisis of the church and how important it is to be authentic. So, so good. Available on all podcasts or subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you on the path. You're listening to On the Path Podcast with Cheryl Nephart, brought to you by Fight for Freedom, educating, empowering, and equipping community members by raising awareness and training others surrounding the issues of sex trafficking. For more information or to donate, go to fightforfreedom.ca. Follow Cheryl Nephart on all social media platforms. Hey guys, welcome to On The Path. I am so excited to have you guys with me. Listen, I got family in the building today. It's family reunion time. I'm so excited. I want to introduce you to some incredible faith leaders here in Canada. We are going to be talking with Chantel and Andrew Beresford. Guys, these are amazing co-pastors of Serve City Church in Ontario, Canada. It's a growing intergenerational church on fire for God. They're passionate about loving people and leading them to Jesus and they challenge them to grow deeper in their faith with him. They really are called to serve uh, literally their communities in so many intentional ways, uh, and they love helping them discover their God-given purpose and equipping them to live it out. Uh, I love their heart for God. I love their heart for Toronto and for this nation of Canada, and they're committed to building the local church as they believe that it is God's most powerful vehicle for evangelism on the earth. On top of that, both of them can preach, y'all. Let me tell you. (laughs) They can throw down. They are a young couple just charting, blazing a trail in the kingdom of God right across this nation. And I wanted to sit with them to find out how are they doing all of this with a young family starting a church plant literally in their early years of marriage. Did that weigh on them? What are the struggles as you build ministry? And we're going to have real talk. So please welcome with me Chantel and Andrew Beresford. Hey, Cheryl. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. We're honored, honored to be here. And we've been talking for almost 20 minutes before <laughs> <laughs> before this conversation because they, they, they are someone that I consider family and friends. Listen, I'm so super proud of all that God is doing in your lives. And I look at both of you individually. I know sometimes people tend to blend married couples together, mm-hmm. but individually you have such distinct callings and paths. I'd love to start by asking uh, your life story. Tell us a little bit about, because I know behind big world changers, there's a there's a big story. So um, Chantel, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about your journey, where God's taken you, all of it. Oh man. So I actually grew up, I actually was born in Edmonton, but my parents moved um, to Ontario when I was like one. And I grew up in Oshawa for most of my childhood. And when I was 17, 18, I moved to the States to go to college. And actually that's where my husband and I met is two Canadians that met in the U S and we actually lived there for 14 years and we did ministry together. We had our two boys in the U S before coming to Canada. And so, you know, I was doing my own personal ministry before I met my husband. I was able to travel to the middle East to Africa. I worked for Hurricane Katrina. I was running about 120 volunteers a week, um, just doing different projects there. And then we got married after that. And uh, what about you, babe? Yeah, she is the superstar and I'm, I'm just honored. <laughs> Come on, just so honored to have been able to uh, connect with her. Um, like she wasn't born in Ontario. I was born in Plainfield, New Jersey. And when I was one, 
Uh, my family moved to Toronto. Uh, I'm a Scarborough boy. <laughs> I grew up in Malvern. In Empringham was the first place I lived. So Malvern represent. <laughs> I lived off of Crow Trail in Malvern. Okay, okay. So, you know, raised um, between Glendower and Scarborough. Um, ended up leaving, likewise, uh, in at 17, going to the States for schooling. Met my beautiful wife. We started family there. Um, got called to ministry at a young age, started pastoring uh, when I was 20 and planting churches. And so from 20 to now 37, which is just my birthday and my 17th uh, ministerial anniversary, just have had the opportunity following God, planting churches. And, you know, and the Lord has brought us back home now yeah. to Toronto. Uh, and so that's been an incredible So we've been journey. together 17 years, married for 15. Mm-hmm. We've been together since we were 20 years old. Yep. And... Um, at the age of, I think we were 23 years old, we knew that God would call us back to Toronto. Yeah. And we said, at, by the time we're 30, we'll come back to Toronto to plant a church mm-hmm. and to be closer to family. And so God, he literally walked that thing out for us. And so years later, we're back in Toronto planting a church and we have three kids now. Come on. <laughs> we have a 13-year-old, 11-year-old, and a five-year-old that bo- was born on New Year's Eve baby. She's our party baby. <laughs> and so it's been amazing what God has done in the last 17 years in our relationship. For sure. For sure. Mm. I want to ask you guys, you know, starting at 20, I think so many people would be listening and thinking, wow, that is really young to to, to start this intentional journey together. Mm -hmm. What were the challenges Mm -hmm. and struggles trying to do ministry, trying to do the things that God called you to do and being so young? Yeah, I would say, you know, as young people, I look back now and I'm just like, man, if it was not for the call of God on our lives, I look, especially the 20 year olds today, I'm just like, man, what were we thinking, you know? And so I would say just, you know, lots of zeal, um, but still trying to walk in wisdom, you know? Um, so the the lack of wisdom, that was a that was a challenge in, in the early years, um, you know? And then even just as a young married couple trying to find, uh, and identify our individual individuality, the distinctions between one another, and allowing one another to you know flourish and walk um, in that. And I think too, being like um, I'm a strong person, I you know I was educated, have a mm-hmm. degree, and then I had small children at a young age that I had this big dream to do. Like I have a background in marketing and health, I have a master's in healthcare. And then I had a, I married a man in, in, in ministry and how did we fit that together? And at one point I actually went back to work full time and my husband was home doing ministry with our two little kids. And that brought some struggle because, yeah. you know, he's a man staying home with the kids who would call me at work, like, babe, these kids. And I'm like, sorry, I'm at work. I can't get home right now. And there was a day finally said, you know what, babe? I, I don't want to rob you of the blessing of you being with your kids. And so I'm asking you to come home. And I said, what? Mm-hmm. Come home? Like- so I, I took her to the, um to this pie company <laughs> that they had. And I sat her down with some pie. And I just said, listen, <laughs> fam, like, we, I want you to be able to get everything that you need to get out of motherhood. Our children need you in these formative years. I know it's going to take a little extra on my end in terms of doing what I need to do in addition to planting the church. Um, but you know, that was, even though that was a massive thing that took place, I came home kicking and blessing. screaming. I was she not, did. I was not happy. Like, <laughs> I'll be honest. Like I, I was like, I don't know how to do the mom thing, be home full time. Um, and, but after I prayed, God gave us so many confirmations that I couldn't argue with that. And so while I was home with my kids for two and a half years, I was also pursuing my master's at nighttime. So I was like through nap time. I was like stew my papers at bedtime and uh, we were able, and I'll have to share this note that, you know, he was, we were church planting. And when I came home, our church tripled a month later in true. size. Very true when I got home and I was able to focus on my kids and my master's and he was able to focus on ministry. Yeah. And that might not be everybody's story yeah. or everyone's call, but I think it's the obedience to, you know, to Christ, whatever it is that God is saying for your household, mm-hmm. um, that when you say yes, there is fruit that's indicative of his blessing, you know? Um, and so in our case, that's a blessing. And what in I'm also case. getting to, sorry to, mean to, cut, to cut you there. What I'm also getting to is no, that, no. Um, you know, 
what we pay attention to grows, mm. right? Mm. What we pay attention to and pour into, and, you know, intentionally grows. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'm so glad that you two are here. I'm just shaking my head and smiling. <laughs> You're probably looking at me going, what's wrong with her? Uh, I have been wanting to have both of you for a long time because I, you two represent to me um, m- millennials that are just doing it right, like going all mm-hmm. out for God, uh, and 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 leaving empty and still finding reserve. We know that that's a divine exchange. Still de- finding wow. reserve for family and friends and community and children. And I was like, how? Mm-hmm. How are they doing that? So so let's let's dive in now. Let's dive in and start to um, really encourage some people. Uh, we know that in mm-hmm. 2020 and 2021, it has been um, job. <laughs> it's been it's been hard. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's been hard. Um, You know, from global pandemics, sickness, natural disasters, economic downturns, death, grief, like all the loss, loss, loss. Mm -hmm. That has been horrible within itself. And then racial tensions, political upheaval, Mm -hmm. uh, all the camps, Mm -hmm. polarizing. You know, it's it's just been nuts. That has really uh, weighed heavily on marriages. We're hearing a lot about marriages not making it, uh, being pushed to the brink. And Mm -hmm. I just wanted, I wanted you on here because I just look at the two of you in the pressure cooker of the past two years, closer than ever, more focused than ever, Mm -hmm. more on fire than ever. Please, 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 anything you can share uh, uh, about how you pulled through. You know, we work really in our family in rhythms. Yep. And since we, we our kids have moved from Michigan to California to Toronto, we've had some major shifts in our family. And what's keep us constant is our family tradition, our family, um, our rules and systems. And one of the biggest things for our family is every Saturday morning, it's family day. And it's, we have family worship every week with our kids. And mm-hmm. we dad... Dad makes pancakes every week for the kids. I'm a one-trick pony. That's, that's what it gets. <laughs> every week. And so we found that for our kids, and even in the season of the pandemic, it's being consistent with our family pouring into our kids. It asks them a lot of questions. And just having that t- over the table has been crucial in this season for our family. Yeah, the dinner the dinner table is one of the biggest pulpits, you know. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there just have to be those grounding things that um, that you focus in on and you prioritize that are not affected by the erratic nature of Mm -hmm. what's taking place and that's really been it for us there are all sorts of stuff that will shift and change but i feel like we have a responsibility and this is what by god's grace you've been able to do to try and still establish those things in the rhythm that this is going to happen no matter what Um, and we're able to imbue our kids with the knowledge and the things that they need to be able to properly process what's going on um, you know, around them. And so that's been a big blessing. And we really believe we, we pastor our home before we pastor our church. All facts. Like we give the best to the best to our children, our attention. And people know it. Our team knows don't call us on a Saturday is our sacred time. We don't, it's very rare that we take assignments on Saturday unless our whole family is coming together with us, yeah. but it's, it's sacred. Our Saturdays for our family. Yeah. So I'd say building rhythms and making sure that, 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 um, that those unchanging things are there despite what is taking place. And I think also yep. having honest conversations and I don't think I've cried in, I cried a lot over the season. <laughs> and I think yeah. having though, even with my husband, we've had some real serious conversations yeah. and having that, um, that space to have those moments of isolation, um, of like just discomfort and being okay. Yeah. And we've done that with our children too. Like it's okay. Cause it was hard on them. It was very hard on our three kids, the transition of this pandemic, but it was okay not to be okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, even, you know, in, in our household, like there were some anxiety, mm-hmm. um, things that started happening, even with our children starting to manifest, yeah. um, physically some things that were happening, whether it be panic attacks or nervous tics and things mm-hmm. that just came up. And you're looking like, man, what on earth is this? You know, how are we going to navigate this? So aside from the racial things that we had to navigate with them and, and, um, and also the, the relational things that took place, there are also those physical things that were happening as a result of the psychological tension. Mm -hmm. And so as you're saying, babe, I think that's such a great point, creating safe spaces 
to for your kids to be able to process and for us to be able to navigate and have those difficult conversations. Um, and we also, last thing I would say is Jesus. We believe in Jesus and therapy. Come on. You know? Come on. And so having a conversation with someone else, I think, um, sometimes is what needs to transpire as well. And that's how we have been able to. And I think also I would say, <laughs> I know I've added more things, but Go for it. I think, you know, there was many times I had to call people and say, I'm not okay. Yeah. And raising our hand and saying, can you check on me? I need you to check on me because a lot of times I'm the strong friend all the time, checking on everybody. And I had to humble myself and say, Hey, you know what? I'm not okay in this season. Yeah. And I need you to call me and check on how I am doing. And sometimes we don't want to verbalize that because, you know, people assume that we, we were okay, but yeah. I, there was points that I was not okay. And I think that got us through in this last year and a half. Yeah. And, you know, it's so funny because, you know, as they say, check on the strong ones. Right. Um, I, I found for myself too, uh, throughout the entire, I mean, we're still in it, we're not out of it, but throughout yeah. the entire two year process, um, in 2020, especially when it all hit so hard and it was all, uh, so painful watching just the numbers of deaths around the world and so on. Uh, my family and I, we lost seven people. I had experienced seven deaths wow. in one year and I, I wasn't hiding on it. I, I posted and announced it and walked through it every time. And my phone barely rang. Uh, people barely checked wow. on me, but when they did check on me and when the phone did ring, it was to minister to another church. It was to help another church navigate racial tensions. It was to help speak up. And could you help us through this spot? We don't know what to do with our church. And so people were pulling on me, but nobody was asking or checking in. How are you? Wow. Right. And so I love what you said, Chantal. I just feel like I wanted to camp there for a minute because there are people that are listening there are husbands and wives, or maybe they're listening separately, and they're not being truthful with what's really going on inside, and they're trying to spare the other from mm -hmm. from from breaking. But you know, because it's because there's so much crisis. Do I want to add more crisis? But you have to say, I'm not okay. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. You summed it up very well. Yeah. And, you know, I, I want to ask you now, because now that we're talking about this crazy time that that is 2020 and 2021, what are the what are the big lessons that have come up for you? you you've been talking about processing and working through. Um, I'd love to know, like, what's 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 God been downloading into you? What have you been seeing? What are what what have you come out with in terms of lessons? I, you know, we talk so much about um, self care. Uh, like, you know, go get your nails done, go get a coffee. But I realized in this season, soul care is very crucial. And the thing is, you can go on vacation, you can go to different places, then you come back to your same mess and nothing changes. Yeah. But when you deal with a, you have a system or a maintenance um, regimen for yourself and for your soul, it maintains you for the next few months or even years. But if you don't change anything, you just go on vacation, and you go back to your same situation, nothing changes. And so I feel the last two years, I've been really learning about what, what does my soul really need? What refuels me? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm learning to be flexible, like really flexible in this season because things might not go the way that I want it to go. Mm -hmm. And I have to be okay with that. And how do I process that? Like, how do I deal with the, you know, I don't know what's going on day. Like it was like day by day, things are changing. The news is updating things. Restrictions are changing. Like you just don't know what's happening. And so I had to realize what does my soul need versus focus on self care. Yeah. I would also say, I, I, I think um, even just considering all of these things, soul care and, and self care also being courageous, yes. you know, I would say that it's imperative to be courageous and be willing. You know, that's one of the things I learned from this season when all of the, when things were in upheaval and everybody was trying to figure out what are the right things to say, or should I do it mm -hmm. at the risk of losing relationships? Should I say it at the, the risk of um, compromising the platform that I've built, you know, on in many cases with indifference and all this sorts of stuff, is it worth it to like risk it mm. in, and be courageous enough to tell the truth, to be a truth teller, to stand for what is right, to speak up uh, for those who are silent and all of that sorts of stuff. And, I, I feel like this season has taught us that, you know, even where there's loss, um, just as Jesus encouraged that it's always right to do what's right mm. and to speak up and to stand for those 
um, who are in need of of, uh, of assistance and a voice. And so, you know, I would say that for me, like my courage has gone to the next level um, during the season. And I just encourage people not to be scared to stand up um, for truth and, and, and for, for right. So, so, so good. And we're going to keep, we're going to keep drilling down. It's going to get heavier and heavier. <laughs> <laughs> get ready. Um, so guys, as we're, as we've been sharing, we, you know, let's be honest with each other and, and with those that are listening and or, or watching, uh, we've never been in a more polarizing time than we have in 2021. You know, the conflicts, all the camps, all the battles around different things. You can insert, it's interchangeable, but people are just mm-hmm. waging war against each other on various issues. And it's it's been beyond overwhelming to see the great divide that's happening even in the church. And, you know, yeah. I, I'd love to know what you are learning as pastors as you navigate this season. That's one. And even if it hurts, what is your message for the church in this season? I think something that we're learning is when we cut our skin, we all cut blood, right? And so even if we don't agree, we can still be loving to other people and be generous. And I think we're not at our church because we really believe in serving people is that we're not because of you believe this or believe that, that we're going to serve you differently. We love you wherever you stand on whatever situation. I think we're learning that that's really important to love. And that's the mission of Christ, right? To love people. And I think that's something we constantly find ways how can we serve our people more our community more and no matter if they think that we're going to do something different let's do something opposite um so that's something i think we were we're navigating through yeah just being to the place again it's like we we we're in a a time where i believe the the biggest agenda of the enemy is division and anything he can do to try um to drive a wedge in between brother and sister because jesus says in john 13 35 that they'll know that we are his disciples not by our tongue talking Mm -hmm. not by our running around not by our bible thumping or any of that stuff but by the love that we have one to another Um, that's one of the biggest signs that we are christ's disciples Mm -hmm. so if he can drive a wedge between brother and sister mother and father all of that sorts of stuff in that regard um then you know his agenda is is going forward and so for us it's trying to figure out a way to um, still be able to be unified even though we are distinct in our positions Mm -hmm. and being able to challenge um, the church as Chantal is saying that you know what I mean we can disagree in our perspective on certain things but we still can love and respect one another um, and not give in to or yield to the agenda uh, of the enemy. And I want us to create an environment at our church or as leaders that you can call me at any moment. Even if we don't agree, you know that you have a brother in Christ that I'm in a situation and I'm going to put that aside because I need you. Yeah. And we want to serve those, even if you've done us wrong, that's a hard place, but we mm-hmm. truly, like I always, I always tell people, you know, the people in the church, my husband's not my enemy. The enemy is the enemy. Oh yeah. And let's remember who the enemy is. And it's so easy to be, to choose other people to target and get loose focus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so good. So you're saying that even though we may be on different sides of the, of the fence on issues, we are called to be the body. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, there's connectivity, there's unity, and we're losing sight of that. Yes, we are. Absolutely. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a loss of focus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Yeah. No, I'm saying, yeah, it's a loss of focus. I think that um, it's a smoke screen in many regards. And, and my thing is, you know, it's it, there's there's COVID. There are all these various things that are very real threats, um, you know, thoughts around vaccination and all of these things. You know, it is not a it is not a homogenous issue. Everybody's perspective is not the same. Everybody's reaction um, physically to these things is not the same. There are different views, opinions, all these things, mm-hmm. um, you know, and throughout the course of our life, you know, we, we're we going to continue. This is this is a um, this is a reincarnation of several things that have happened historically, whether it be, um, you know, in 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 health or in you know, racial things or whatever the case may be. And so I think that there will always be things that pop up, um, but we always have to make sure that we are focused in on the right thing and keeping, especially as the church, um, the gospel as the central and the paramount um, focus. 
you know, it's interesting. And, and I, I, if you've got more, just give it to me because it's so, so good. I'll take it all. Um, <laughs> you know, the Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's nothing new. Absolutely. But yet we are reacting and freaking out as if this is like, oh, this is never, you know, the, the enemy has no new tricks. He's just, as I, I'm going to take a phrase from what you said. He's a one trick pony. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Deal yeah, to yeah. kill and destroy. It was laid out from the beginning. And so it just takes on different variations, mm-hmm. but um, it's so interesting that we as believers, I, I look at, I look at our cousins in the States. I look at just North America. I look around the globe that, you know, we are family and, and the, the, bl- the blood of Jesus is thicker than political party. It's thicker than, you know, ideology. It's thicker than, you know, skin color. Like I just wish that we could get it and get it quickly and yeah. move on. Yeah. You must be frustrated so sometimes. Yeah, and I think it's so important. People, I think they really gravitate to authentic relationships. Mm-hmm. And in this season, we you can you know you know if you know if people are authentic. And I think even if we um, different different or have differences opinions on things, you just know when people are still being authentic. Yeah, because I think you can still have your opinion and be real and honest, but re- be respectful. And and that's what really I think is really important when we're having these conversations. And um, I think that's the key thing, really, yeah. is being authentic, be who you are. We're not asking you to change. I'm not, I'm not trying to bring you over to my side. I think that we are grown enough to have honest and real conversations and realize we're on a journey. So one, con- one conversation is not going to cut it. Like, if we're going to dialogue and be in relationship, this is the next 5, 10, 15 years on this journey and we don't have to have it in a two hour conversation and that we're going to do things in bite size and digest it slowly so we can That's actually good. get the nutrients out of the conversations that we need to have. Yeah, one of the biggest challenges for me during the season of the past, especially as it pertained to the race conversation, was that people were, um, in many of the conversations we had, people just wanted to race to a finish line, mm. like, just wanted to, let's let's just get to it, you know, so, so what do we got to do? You know, brother, what do we got to do? You know, how can we just, okay, so now I heard it. Okay. You know, and it's kind of like, well, you know, this is a journey. We're not just looking for a, you know, an overnight thing. It's a journey. We're looking for relationship. I mean, in many regards, some of the issues that we have are stemming from um, the fact of that there's inauthenticity and also um, that we don't have these genuine relationships. Mm -hmm. And many of the fears, uh, I'll just say that, you know, that a lot of us had around that season are coming to pass where we thought, well, some of these people are just connecting with us, you know, because we're tokens, you know. Um, But now that the season, the inflammatory um, events are over, you know, they're ghosts or they're gone. You know, now that the tokens are cashed in, uh, if I can say, uh, speak proverbially. You know, now the now they're no longer there. And so I think most important to us, um, not only in the race conversation, but um, obviously with what's happening now uh, within COVID, you know, and with the vaccination and, you know, combo and all of that is that authenticity matters the most. Mm -hmm. And we can still differ and have distinctions, um, but we still can be unified because it's not about uniformity, Mm -hmm. um, but it's about but it's about unity. Come on, preach. <laughs> so good. So good. We're just so good. we're just gonna call up the choir now to come and we're gonna call up the offering. Can we get nearer my God to thee in E flat as the choir? <laughs> I'm not there God to thee. <laughs> the altars are now open for you. you that was a preach right there pastor um yeah, yeah. Auth- yes. authenticity yes. is everything uh, we that's mm-hmm. all we're asking for that's all we're asking for authentic relationship authentic uh understanding community mm-hmm. sitting in conversation authentic allyship mm-hmm. We want that, not performative. We're done with the performative stuff. I could Come stay, on. I could stay right here, but I, I wanna, I wanna ask this question because I thought this would be so fun to ask you guys. Um, so my husband and I, we've been married for 26 years, right? It's, 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 it's nuts. Yeah, we got married super young, out of Bible college, and I know that that's very much your life story as well. So you're gonna, you're gonna be like us, and you're gonna be young and have like grown adult kids. It's the best. Go, go, <laughs> it's, come on. It's the best it's the best and they become like your best friends um i want to know what what did you quickly have to adjust in yourself what did you have to switch on or switch off 
as you surveyed the land of marriage that you were like, okay, this is not going to work or this is needed to work? What did you have to do to uh, or implement to reduce conflict in your marriage? <laughs> I'd love to hear that. Yeah, I definitely independent. I was definitely don't need you type of thing. I felt like I made my own money. I'm educated. Like, I just felt like I just can do it on my own. And I had to learn how to um, bring him into the conversation and actually share my point of perspective. Because a lot of times I already know the answer. Let's just go move forward. And I think really taking the time to listen mm -hmm. um, to what his perspective was on certain situations or actually... I actually, my husband cares about a lot of things, like most things that most people don't care. He actually really cares. And so I didn't give him the opportunity to care because I thought, oh, you don't care. Like the kids, like I'm just going to take the, put the kids in like basketball. Oh, I want to have a, a conversation. Like, really? You care about that? I, realizing that I was already answering a lot of things for him without asking him. Yeah, my wife, you wouldn't even let me open the door for <laughs> when we first got started. Good. Got started. So, you, so, so, just to stay with you, Chantel, for a minute. So, you had to, yeah. uh, you had to, in a way, shed some independence so that yeah. you can allow yourself to lean on your husband more. Yes, I definitely. Yeah, I, I, and I think I wasn't used to that. That someone, like, honestly, tell people, like, my husband was madly in love with me, like madly and that was very different from where I was coming from to have someone that really loved like really loved me that would do anything that would serve me like I would come home from night school and the bath is running hot water when I got home like with a bubble bath like he's just like he, he loved children like he would take care of our kids and up in the middle of the night like we, we really had a partnership and it wasn't like gender roles it was a partnership and I wasn't used to that so I had to learn how to have, like, walk with a partner that way that I'm like you're different like where'd you come from <laughs> <laughs> and I realized that sometimes I didn't value that because I didn't know that there was someone like that and so it took me a couple of years to really like wow I married a good one like wow like very blessed you know? so good what you about know? you pastor that was that's I I love that I that that's so me everything you're saying is so me yeah <laughs> pastor what about you you make me blush and stuff man <laughs> I mean I appreciate appreciate all the kind words they um, I think that, you know, just thinking about growth, one of the challenges was trying to um, navigate our individuality. And for myself, it was not being um, coming from, let's say it this way, coming from the background that I do. If you grew up in a West Indian household um, with both parents, you know, it's just one person is dominant and, you know, and one person takes the lead and the role and all of that. And sometimes, um, the spouse, the other spouse will get squelched or won't be able to walk in um, their, you know, in their calling and they just kind of, you know, aren't able to flourish. And one of the biggest challenges for me growing up in a very male dominant household, and not only that, but then even in our ecclesiastical context, like in a church context, very male dominated as well. It was difficult for me to, even while I was serving her and doing all of those things and loving on her, I still was kind of like, okay, you have your role and I have my role and I'm just going to be the boss and all of that because of, of you know, um, the, where I was coming from. And so God changed, I had a paradigm shift and I realized like, you know what, if I'm a good leader in my household, that means that my wife should be flourishing under my leadership, mm -hmm. right? Even if I'm the head and the lead and all that sorts of stuff, if she's not becoming everything that, you know, she's supposed to do under my care and under my leadership, then I'm not really being a good leader. Mm -hmm. And so over the years, you know, what people see us as now, you know, um, 17 years together and all of this and 15 years of marriage and where we are now, um, seeing her flourish and all of that, um, I had to get to the place where I, uh, where I got to the place where I was like, you know what, man, I got to put down this pride and I want to figure out what, what do you do? What are you passionate about? What, um, how can I do everything I can to fan into flame what God's placed in you and not, it just not be about you serving my vision and what God has put in my heart. So I think that was a big thing for us. Mm -hmm. big thing for us. I love that. And I don't do this often, but I have to jump in and piggyback on this moment. Go I usually it. just let you guys go. So we know Deborah to be, I mean, for many, uh, women like, like Chantelle and myself, uh, you know, those that are really strong and like, 
uh, just uh, called for like battle. Uh, those types of women, there's not a lot of them that we can draw from in the Bible or that we can uh, align ourselves with. Deborah obviously is one of the biggest ones because of just her warrior heart, her, you know, ability to, to speak boldly, what God was saying. Uh, she was fearless. And I love this about Deborah because uh, people don't really know this unless you study. And, but you know, we're, we're, we love, we're lovers of the word here. Her husband's name hmm. is Lapidoth, mm -hmm. Lapidoth, mm -hmm. which literally translated means fanner of the flame. Mm -hmm. About to make me shout in this. <laughs> in this literally means check it out, fanner of the flame, and so in order for someone to evolve, in order for well, I'll make it general, but for anyone to evolve in their purpose, their calling, the fullness of what God has called them to, they have to be aligned with people that are going to fan the flame, and so I, I love. So I, I say yes. We're you know when I get to talk to all the women, I, we're Deborahs, we're Deborahs, but is your husband a Lapidoth? Mm -hmm. You know, because, and, and I think that I, I just want to say to you, uh, Andrew, that you are just such a perfect example because I look at Chantel, she is a powerhouse. And, and I know I can speak from experience. This is not outside observation. You just let her go and fly and soar and you are good. You are confident and secure in your manhood. And in fact, it's actually um, a reward and a compliment mm -hmm. to you to see her mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. absolutely it's there's nothing like seeing my wife um you know considering what she's gone through people don't know i'll never forget back in um, when we first got together she left and went to serve um, and lead hundreds of volunteers when the hurricane katrina catastrophe hit and um out of that seeing all that devastation i went to visit her um while she was serving down there you know church steeples in the ground brand new, you know, $100,000 cars in the median yammed out or eaten out, sorry, um, <laughs> by, <laughs> by the uh, salt water and stuff as a result of the, the hurricane, right? And it was just so horrible. When she came back from that, she was mute. She was not talking. She wasn't doing anything. Um, it changed the trajectory of who she was in many regards because of what she witnessed and that level of devastation. So, to see her now living that potential out, you know, people here talking about traveling and doing all this and preaching and even now being on the platforms that she's on and speaking um, to men and women in this regard. It's such a mammoth blessing to me to see what God is doing in her life. And yeah. Come on. Thanks. I love Thanks. it. And I have to add to that. I think though we've put the hard work in. I think it it took us time to get here, but we've put a lot of conversations, a lot of prayer, a lot of heated conversations, a lot of honest conversations that got us here. And I don't think it's a lot of it's to when it when you have to unlearn things, it's not easy and it takes time. And we put the time and work in with um, a lot of prayer and a lot of accountability to get where we are. So I, I just don't want people to think like, oh, it's just easy. We put a lot of years of work in to get where we are. And I tell people the hard work is the hard work. Come on. And that's what we've done. We've done that. So good. Yeah. Marriage is intentional. It's lifelong. It's ministry. It's sacrifice. It's, it's not, it's not overnight. So, so, so good. Listen, I got one last question for you and then a surprise question. I'm going to hit you right between <laughs> the eyes there. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, whenever I get to speak and teach one of the things that I, it's a pillar for me, um, like a lifelong mandate that, you know, storms are our greatest teachers. The mountaintop yeah. is great and fine. And that's what everyone sees. And they celebrate you for that. But it's in the valley that you, as you said so perfectly just now, that you are forged, that you are shaped. It's in the fire that you are crafted. Um, the lessons that we learn when we are at rock bottom, we take with us mm -hmm. forever. And so the idea of being on the path for us here is that we learn from one another's hard moments as well as the celebrations so i want to ask yeah. you guys a real personal question what if the rock bottom and think about those rock bottom moments right now what have they taught you about yourself what have they taught you about god and what have they taught you about others pastor uh, andrew you go first <laughs> wow god self and others um i think you know there have been several things that we've had to navigate throughout throughout the journey and 
I would say, you know, what I've, I've learned that um, it's important to, and some of these things might be a reiteration, but I think that they are still necessary and they're what I've learned. Um, asking for help. It's mm-hmm. okay to ask for help. People are there to serve. A lot of times people are desirous of serving, um, but we, because we didn't ask for help, mm-hmm. are unable to um, unable to get the help that is necessary. Sometimes our breakthrough, our deliverance is in the hands of others. And talking about learning about God, God desires to use people. That's why he would say stuff like bear one another's burdens and mm-hmm. And so doing your preferring the law of Christ in Galatians chapter six. And so it's like he oftentimes it, this is desire. Right. And so um, people are there to help. I have to and about myself. I need to be willing to humble myself, sometimes be the dirt who has to receive the seed, mm, who is good. open to receive the seed so, so that good. not only my needs can be met, but also the person who is sowing into my life that they can be blessed um, as well. And so that was so good. <laughs> So good. I think um, I learned in those seasons that how resilient I really am. And I know that I have no credit. It's really through God's grace, God's power. I see God's power work in my weakness at those rock bottom moments. Also recognizing that um, I'm human. Yeah, I'm totally human. And the enemy wants to think that you're the only person going through your situation, that you're horrible, mm-hmm. you're a failure, or you're not good enough. And recognizing that I'm more than the situation is reminding me I'm more human than ever, mm-hmm. which means I need a bigger God more than ever. I need everything that he has for me. And recognizing that I don't have to do it in my own strength, but I again call on people, call on my community, and call on my God and cry out to Him when I need Him the most. I also want to say this too. I want to say that, you know, I've learned that you have to be patient with others, Mm -hmm. right? I think it's imperative to give people time to process, especially times like we want people to be patient with us. We're like, hold on, give me a second. I want to, you know, but we also have to extend that same level of patience. And know that because people are humans, yep. that they take time and they need time to process things just as we do at times. So good. At times. So, so, so good. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you know why. You can see why I have invited this incredible power <laughs> couple. <laughs> Pastor Andrew and Chantel Beresford of Surf City Church. Uh, before we go on to the surprise question, how can we track with all the great things that God's doing in your life? Can you tell us uh, on social media, your handles, your website, anything? Yeah. Um, so my wife, lovely wife's uh, Instagram is at Chantal Beresford. Mine is at G Andrew Beresford and our church serve city church, which is four years old, about to be five in January uh, is at serve city GTA at serve city GTA. Um, our web address is serve city uh, so uh yeah surf city so, uh, yeah, awesome yeah. and these are incredible speakers and teachers mm-hmm. and uh soon to be authors i know that that's coming and the conferences are coming come <laughs> on now it. so many <laughs> things coming <laughs> down the pipe yeah. yeah oh i just i just love it uh but you're raising a generation of 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 warriors you're raising a generation of humanitarians mm-hmm. people that are just loving on community and serving in really cool ways i'm so i'm so thankful to know you um, and I, I, we, we watch you here at home and we, we go nuts when we see you and you tear it up every time. Um, oh yeah, but we do owe you a physical visit. So we're, that that's coming, that's coming. They're probably going to come in the next couple of weeks. We'll, we promise that. Awesome. Um, so yeah. Okay. Here's your surprise question. Are you guys ready for we're ready? <laughs> I guess. <Yeah. laughs> So I get to ask every, it's such a privilege. I get to ask every one of my guests Mm. like over the past three seasons, this same question. And it's amazing how different and rich the answers are. So in light of our conversation, speaking about uh, crisis, crisis management, honesty, authenticity, relationship, unity in the body, marriages, uh, family, anything of anything that you want to talk on, finish this sentence. It's time for what? It's time for what, Chantal? It's time for, oh man, it's time for, to reset maybe, you know, time to reset our thinking, reset our systems, reset our strategy, reset our routines to go to the next level or to the next season. I love this. I I don't know. Um, 
Boom. <laughs> that was the answer. It's time to reset our thinking, our strategies. Just uh, it's time to just go back to square one, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I love that. Pastor, what about you? Oh, man, I would say it's time for more authenticity. Like I am all for just being your being real. Um, and I think it's just time for people to embrace who God has uniquely placed them in the earth to be. And, um, and, and yeah, that's, that's an important Can I add to that? It's time not to shrink yourself back. And it's so funny because I was coming with you on the reverse. So let's, I'll give you the official yeah. lead in. <laughs> I'll give you the official lead in. You're up first. So what is it not time for? Let it rip. Go ahead, Chantal. It's not time to complain. It's not time to complain. I think it's time to um, be honest, but maybe not complain. I think we've done a lot of complaining in this season, but it's time to do the work, you know, figure out what's what's not working and then get to work. I, I would I might I would say it's not time to to be a shallow dweller, you know. Mm. Um, I think that right now People need depth um, as it pertains to uh, faith. And I know that, you know, we're in a generation that is very consumer driven um, and is very seeker friendly. And I think we need to be seeker aware, but I feel like seekers are looking for something that they can stand on Mm. and something that is substantial. Right. And so for me, I think it's time to not just be in the shallow, the stuff we're dealing with now it definitely calls for depth. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what I would say. There are no words, guys. This is, (laughs) this was more than what I even anticipated it was going to be. And I had high hopes. So I want to thank you so, so much for being on the path and, and spending time with me today. And I just want to give you the last moment to say anything that's on your heart to uh, the kingdom of God that's listening all over the globe. Well, firstly, we just want to honor you, Cheryl. Yes. You are incredible. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity and for being a leading voice in this nation and yes. around the world. We're so excited about all that God is doing in you and just fan into flame, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all that you're you're walking into. So thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. What would you say to the kingdom, babe, in this season? You know, I think I would just say that I, you know, actually, we were talking this offline, but I'll go back and say, you know what? And uh, something that we've been talking about in our home is be everything that God has called you to be. And even if you're scared, insecure, or don't feel you got it together, mm-hmm. just do it. Like, do it scared, do it afraid, even if it doesn't look polished. Because we have a social media world, you think that you have to already come. People don't want to, you don't want people to see you at your bottom. Wow. But you know what? I'm learning. I'm okay to welcome people in my becoming. Because they can, I want to learn the lessons in the, the behind the scenes. Not everything that you see um, edited or filtered that you can't learn things. But there's some things you can really learn behind the scenes in the becoming that you can Tag really me in. go for it. Take me in. I'm going to say every, every, um, the, the journey is the destination. Come on. You know what I mean? I think the journey is the destination. And so I piggyback and say the journey is the destination. Every step uh, is an arrival, as, Come on. as the book says. And then not only that. You know, the, the the walk of faith is a miracle in action. Cliche yes. to cliche to cliche. Yes. But they're so powerful when you think about what you're saying. The becoming, it's the journey. Instead of this distant thing mm-hmm. that one day when I get there, then mm-hmm. it will be greatness. It's no, mm-hmm. every single step is a destination. Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a, the journey. And I just think that's powerful. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you are coming back. I want to thank you so much for being on the path, guys. Um, please promise me that you come back. And until then, God bless you guys thank so you much. Too. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I want to just thank Chantel and Andrew for hanging out with me. It's always so good to be speaking with friends, people that feel like family. And also, I love when we get to have a Canadian context to our conversations. It is so important for us to keep taking stock of what's happening from uh, one side of this great nation to the other and uh, to talk about what God's doing on the earth. Well, I learned a couple of things. Authenticity is key. Authenticity is everything. We need to be truthful about where we're at, uh, how strong we are, how strong we're not feeling in a moment. We 
need to white flag and let that be something that's okay. Let's take off the stigma of uh, having moments of vulnerability, having moments of weakness. It is so important to surround yourself with people that can catch you when you fall. And if you feel like you don't have those people around, can I encourage you that Jesus, as the Bible says, is a friend that sticks closer than any brother. He is sure to always catch you when you fall. I just think it's so important for us to continue the conversations of racial unity, harmony, and oneness. This is the kingdom of God. This is the fullness of the kingdom. And we want it to be healthy. We want it to be growing. And we want to reflect the heart of God. I'm so thankful for all these conversations, plus all the tips that I got and reminders on how to keep our marriages and our families thriving. Such, such, such good info. Thank you again, guys. Until then, I'm just so excited about all these conversations. Can't wait for you to see who's coming up next. But in the meantime, keep living, keep learning, keep loving, and let's keep keep being authentic. I'll see you on the path. You're listening to On the Path Podcast with Cheryl Nemhart, brought to you by Fight for Freedom, educating, empowering, and equipping community members by raising awareness and training others surrounding the issues of sex trafficking. For more information or to donate, go to fightforfreedom.ca. Follow Cheryl Nemhart on all social media platforms.